The 2017 legislative session will see the same majorities as last year, but new leadership positions, including Crisanta Duran, Colorado's first Latina Speaker of the House. Among some of the expected issues the legislature will tackle are a state budget that includes funding for affordable housing and new marijuana use regulations. Eric, how do you see the new leadership, leadership uh, uh, folks changing what we might see out of the legislature? I think Crisanta Duran is a very different person than Dickie Lee Hullinghorst. She has a slightly bigger majority, but more than that, she represents West Denver as opposed to liberal Boulder. It's a different background, it's a different constituency, it's a different mindset. The real issue, your question is framed around the second floor of the Capitol, the legislature, and uh, you know that does not look a whole lot different. Yes, different leadership, but not a whole lot different than it has for the last two years, uh, split control of the two houses. My question, Dominic, is about the first floor of the Capitol, the governor's office, and what John Hickenlooper in the last two years of his term, what is his agenda? And I really haven't seen that yet. I think he was you know, halfway out the door hoping for an appointment in Washington, speaking of transitions and Hillary Clinton and all the rest. We saw when he was mayor of Denver in that second term, there's some ADD that sets in and he set his sights on, on being governor. He, I think he was having his sights to moving on from here. That is not happening by all expectations he will complete his term. So the question is, and I think it is incumbent on him, to sort of set to make it clear before too long, what does he want to accomplish here? Is it about roads? Is it about fiscal reform? Uh, what is the Hickenlooper agenda for 2017 and 2018? Penn, you have a lot of experience over the Capitol. You know a lot of the players that are there right now. Do you think new leadership will change up the traditional logjam we see from a split legislature? No, because in, in many ways the new leadership ha is a little more polarized mm -hmm. than um, the prior session. Um, in, in, if you look at Republican leadership in the House and the Senate um, and, and align it up sort of with Democratic leadership in the House and the Senate, uh, in part because of sort of the Trump victory and the Trump message and sort of the Sanders element in the Democratic Party, I actually think the caucuses have moved further away from one another than they were two years ago. And to Eric's point about the first floor, um, I could well be proven wrong, but I'm not convinced that the governor's legislative agenda matters anymore. Um, I, you know, he, he. everybody talked about the fact that if Hillary won, he was going to take a cabinet post. Donna Lynn made it clear that she was lieutenant governor, but she had no interest in running for governor. And so there was already the beginnings of a void. Now you have a Governor Hickenlooper who's still here, who's not in the cabinet office, but he's termed out. He's essentially begun lame duck status now. And so I'm not convinced that whatever um, legislative agenda he has is, is going to carry much weight, particularly given the strong divide between um, the, the, the various caucuses. Uh, and, you know, I said this before, I hope I'm wrong, but I wouldn't anticipate any major legislation being accomplished except the budget, because constitutionally we have to pass a budget. Patty, let's start there. Do you think we're going to see much out of the split legislature, even though we have different leadership positions? I can't get over how much sameness there's going to be in the discussions. We're going to hear about construction defects. We're going to hear about the hospital advisory fee. We're going to hear about so many of these things that we've talked about over and over and over. I do think that Hickenlooper has kind of to set, you can see where he might be going with some of his last two years, and it's returning to some of the do-gooder Hickenlooper things he used to do. The fact that he came out with the plan to use some of this pot tax to do affordable housing gets back to his Denver's Road home, which has not been a raging success, but is certainly an issue that is critical across Colorado, that Colorado has to deal with it. And I wouldn't be surprised if we actually see a very uh, socially involved agenda. That doesn't mean that any of it will get through the legislature. David, Rocky Mountain Gun Owners has uh, support in some high positions in the Republican uh, Party among the Senate. Uh, do you think that's going to impact the session? I hope not. There, uh, other than in making more money for Dudley Brown by uh, direct mail, of which he's quite a genius. Uh, in terms of Hickenlooper's having an agenda, I, I think he's used up the agenda and he's with a major accomplishment that he did unilaterally, which was bringing Colorado into the Obamacare huge expansion of Medicaid. He didn't get the approval of the legislature to do that. He did it as a one-man thing. 
and that's one of the most consequential decisions any governor has made in the last generation by themselves. That that decides the budget. Medicaid, even before uh, this the Hickenlooper expansion was like Pac-Man going around and gobbling up a larger and larger share of the budget every year. So if you say programs for affordable housing or this or that, the reason you can't have them is because of this. For good or ill, uh, he's been an incredibly influential governor.